tomorrow by noon. I got to come back to Richmond and be back in Norfolk again tomorrow evening. And I got no voice. I have no voice. So I just thought I would come on and listen to your comments, your questions, and see if we can't tighten up some of the stuff that we've learned over the last five weeks. Just for a few minutes, y'all. This is not an official. I'm not even going to post this. I don't think. I don't think I'm going to post this. I just thought I would come on and look at y'all. I thought y'all was asleep. Y'all, listen, don't y'all start nothing tonight. Please, please don't start nothing. I'm begging y'all not to start nothing. I really don't want to do it tonight. Uh, yeah, Sister Kashira Boone just came on. Ask her. I got to be in Tide Water tomorrow, y'all. I got to be in Tide Water, and y'all busy too. Hey, uh, Sister Aisha, pretty smile. Brother Darren Hayes, what's happening, man? Listen, I ain't going to lie. I got to keep it 100 because well, that's what I do. I'm falling in love with this family here. I got to tell y'all the truth. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I, 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 I went up. I was laid across the bed. I put my son to bed. I laid across the bed for a minute. I played a game of Madden football on PlayStation 4. And I said, now I got, I, it was bothering me about keeping my word. I already can feel in my heart that a lot of people are sleeping tonight. I just do. I just feel it. They're tired. And maybe it's me. I don't know. You know, I didn't say the Lord told me. I'm just telling you. I feel it. So... For those who have not watched the video from earlier, you need to watch that video. Okay? I'm not going to lie to you. You have to watch it. And since I'm not going to be on here but a couple minutes tonight, maybe you can spend your time going back to watch that video because next week I am going to go in. I am going in on next week. Um, and we're going to continue to dig and expose uh, how the Zionist Jews... Uh, to God be the glory, Sister Kashira. I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, I never know which way I'm going in. That's why I like for you all to talk. Uh, uh, about how the Zionist Jews, powers that be, if you will, the elite, uh, are running this world. How they are contrived, have, how they have presented us with contrived, Predictive programming. And I got questions already, so let's take them. I heard you mention something about people's. Yes. Okay, now let me just say this. I heard you mention something about people selling or cashing out on their social security in church about two weeks ago. Do you mind briefly enlightening, enlightening me on that? Brother Curtis, they did it, man. I promise you, if y'all don't go back and watch the video, for those that are here... I'm not going in tonight. We're going to bed. Well, I'm going to bed. I don't know where y'all going. But I'm going to bed tonight. Oh, Lord have mercy. And they still got to cut the check. But listen to me. Let me just say this. To those of y'all who did not catch my video, I'm not even going to post this video. I don't believe. I just came on to take questions. And Sister Shonja Green says... I heard you mention something, thank y'all for the love, about people selling or cashing out on their social security in church. Yes. Now, what I will do in all fairness, Sister Chandra, I will take more time to just discuss that, okay? It won't be tonight, but I will touch on it a little bit since you are tuned in, okay? It won't be tonight um, in its detail. I won't go into a comprehensive study on it, but I will touch it a little bit. Um, because you all have forced my hand. Y'all got me on here. Again, I was getting ready to say before I answer that question, I can't help myself, y'all. I'm becoming attached to this group. Um, y'all have blessed me. Everybody is not hungry for truth. And it's 11 o'clock. Look at my mama. Mama, go to bed. Go to sleep. You need to get some rest. Jeez. Hardhead moment. I, it's just terrible. Anyhow, Sister Chandra, just hold on though. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to give you something to take with you. So again, for those that are just coming here, look at y'all bringing the numbers. I, I, you know, I don't know. You got to be careful what you ask for. I didn't even want the numbers tonight. 
I didn't even want the numbers because I, I know I can't start a subject because y'all know I repeat myself over and over so that the people can get a clear understanding. Uh, I'm not dyslexic. I'm not, uh, I'm not having mental issues when I repeat myself. I repeat myself purposely so, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. For those who want to know, I'm taking questions and comments now, tonight. That's all I'm going to do. About Let's take about 15, 20 minutes, and then eyes going to bed. And I meant to say it just like that. Um, Sister Shandra Green asked about the Social Security card. If you go back to my previous videos, I mentioned, and even I think she came Sunday, two Sundays ago maybe, I mentioned that the Social Security card, if you have your Social Security card, has routing numbers, has numbers, banking numbers, because most people don't understand your social security card and your birth certificate are bank, are bank documents. That's right. They're banking documents. Um, if you ever see, hello, Sister Virginia Marlene Coles, what you doing, woke Sister Vanessa Fitzgerald? Look at y'all woke. They, they, they talked me into it. Somebody made me feel bad. And then one of the brothers said something. And I was laid across the bed playing Madden. And now y'all done got me back down here. So I just, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I came down here. See, I would tell y'all something, but that's too much information. I just threw my hat on. Um, I'm not really fully even dressed. I'm just here. I'm fronting. Applaud me tonight. I'm putting on the front tonight. I, I, I was laid across the bed. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Sister Chandra asked about the Social Security card. There I go veering off. Now, those who can get a copy, and I may not be saying this right, um, bear with me, of the original birth certificate, your original birth certificate. I got more questions coming on. Drop some on the Trilateral Commission, Bilderbergs, Federal Reserve. Okay, y'all remind me in a minute, okay? I'm just answering questions tonight. Can you share at what point God began to peel back? <laughs> Sister April, that's what you're going to do tonight? Okay, all right. Let me finish because Sister Chandra and everybody got questions. And I want to answer everybody's questions so everybody can go to bed. Mm -hmm. And here come the friend requests like crazy. Okay. <sighs> if you get a copy of the original birth certificate, not a copy of a copy, of the original, you will see that the back of the birth certificate has a list of banks. Most people don't know that. They have a list of banks, okay? And the numbers that you have on your Social Security card, I don't have any dollars on me because, again, I'm uh, partially dressed, so I don't have everything on me here. Um, but if you have a dollar bill, you'll see you have a list of numbers on every dollar bill. For those that are just coming in, I'm just answering questions tonight. That's it. All right. Um, I'll pray with you. I'll answer your questions and then I'm going to bed. And Warfare Wednesday next week, we will expose the movie industry, the music industry, and so much more. Um, the banking routing numbers that are uh, on your Social Security uh, card, uh, also the list of banks that are on the back of your birth certificate, the original um, those social security numbers are bank numbers. They're routing numbers. Okay. And yes, in fact, there are some people, I am not telling you I have done this because I haven't, I draw the line somewhere, but there are some people who have discovered that there is a, uh, an account assigned to your social security number. Okay. I challenge you to research behind me. Okay, this is public information. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's public information. Okay, you can get your routing number uh, or you can get your numbers. Now, if you look on the dollar bill, that's what I was talking about, the dollar bill. There's a, a group of numbers. I don't have one in front of me and I ain't going to get one. Um, anyhow, I thought I might have one laying around, but I don't. Um. If you get your dollar bill, there's a letter followed by numbers. There's a letter followed by numbers. And what people don't know is all those numbers that are on each individual bill uh, that start off with a letter are actually, are actually 
uh, <clears throat> somebody's social security number in the world. Okay? So, I think that's what you're asking about, Sister Chandra Green. I'm just taking questions, y'all. I'm not going in tonight. Warfare Wednesday was earlier. We're just doing question and comment time tonight. That's it. We're going to bed. Brother Jared Ross says it works. It works. Brother Jared, you have, must have done some research, sir. I'm looking for people who will check behind the things that we say. Okay? So, um, let me explain why that is. Okay? Do y'all have a quick minute for me to explain how that works and why that came about? If not, I'm going to get because folks sleepy. And look at all these folk coming in the room. And I told y'all tonight, we, we's going to bed. We're going to bed. Now, I'm taking questions. I'm taking questions. There were some, a few more questions that were popped up. That popped up and I missed them as people begin to comment. Okay, Curtis, Brother Curtis Winfrey says explain. All right, this is why. When you were born... And I'm going to have to repeat some of this on next week. So don't y'all hold this against me, okay? I'm going to repeat some of it next week. Um, when you were born, when I was born, the first thing that happens in the hospital, Brother Nate Trayvon Scott says, why is it a sin to call a minister or a preacher reverend? I thought we was the only, one of the only ones saying that, one of the only ones. Uh, the Bible says so, Brother Psalms 111, verse 8 and 9. Brother Nate Trayvon Scott, it is a sin to call a preacher reverend. That the Bible says it's a sin. The reason why is because the word reverend means to revere, to venerate, or to worship. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't know a man that's worthy of all that. Okay? Okay, Sister Sean Green says the letter on the back of the social card of the social security card is a way to find out the federal bank. Yes, that's what I forgot to mention. The letter, the letter that's the first uh, out of all your letter and numbers that's on the dollar bill or on the back of the social security card is the bank, the individual bank that you were bought on. And that's what I got to explain. Okay, no, brother David, hey, real, I can't turn up tonight, man. I can't turn up tonight. I'm not even going to post this. I'm going to bed. I'm just taking questions about anything, the Bible, anything tonight. Okay? So let me explain how this works, Sister Chandra Green. Uh, again, you were one of the people that showed up to the Word Church. So I really want to make sure I serve you tonight um, with information because you actually pushed your way out. And we don't get to talk about all those things on Sundays because there's so many different questions. And I'm feeding so many different people. And you know how it goes. Now... The reason why they do this is because when you are born, you go to the hospital, okay? The, uh, most of you were born in a hospital. If you're anything like me, Richard Memorial in the house representing. And when you were born, the government. Now, for those who have never watched my videos, Sister Chandra Green, please do. I'm serious. Please do. If you want to just continue, you haven't heard anything yet. If you think the government lies or uh, something else, just wait till you find out what you've lied, what, been, what you have been lied to regarding the scriptures and the and the and the holy word of God. Um, let me say this. Let, let me say this. The moment you were born, you became a stock. Okay, that's why they have banking letters, symbolic. Banking letter and numbers on the back of your bank documents, which are your birth certificate. Here's why. Okay. Now I need about five good minutes of everybody just to listen to this. Okay. About five good minutes of everybody just to listen to this. Lord have mercy. How can I break this down? So because the United States is not a country. Okay. It is a corporation. The United States, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we operate off a system that's not reality. In other words, there is no real money. And there's something that we all have been told that we have. I have a question, Pastor. Why do we have the Holy Trinity? Father, remind me in a minute. Come back and I'm going to deal with that. There is no Trinity, by the way. And I'll deal with that in a second. Okay. There's no such thing as a Holy Trinity. And there's nothing holy about the Trinity. Okay, but remind me to come back to that, Sister Karen. Let me finish this. This is good. So now, 
Every one of us were stocks and we were sold on the New York Stock Exchange at birth. So when you were at the hospital, the first thing the hospital does is they report you to the uh, Department of Treasury. A lot of people don't know that. They report you to the Department of Treasury. Now, somebody may ask, when a baby is born, why do they inform the Department of Treasury? Well, they, def they inform the Department of Treasury because you are a new product. You are a new product. Let me show you what I mean. Japan, uh, China is sending us what? Toyotas, Hondas, Nintendos, all kind of products. They're sending us products, right? And those products uh, are what we call uh, manufactured products. We also can get what's called natural resources. Okay? Yes, yeah, Sister Karen, I'm coming back in a minute. And we are property. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Man, you factured. So... We are also a product. Now, when you go into the Middle East, they have what's called natural resources. Well, the United States is not known for its natural resources. The United States is known for what's called human resources. That's right. Uh, human, Brother Harold Williams, uh-huh. Now you're on to something, okay? Watch this. That's good, Okay. Human resources. That's why when you get a job, you go to what department? You go to get your uniform and your check from the human resource department. Because uh, the Middle East has natural resources like oil and gold or whatever. And the United States has human. Because wherein their product is Nintendo's, their product is... Is and for those that are coming in, I'm just answering questions tonight. That's it. I'm going to bed. All right. They have Nintendos. They have Hondas. Whatever. The United States has you. So when you're born, they call the Department of Treasury. When that baby comes out, they call the Department of Treasury. And the Department of Treasury, connected to the Social Security uh, Department, issues you a Social Security number. Okay. That social security number is the same thing that Honda has. When you get that Honda, that Honda has a serial number. Or it has a, uh, what you call it? Um, VIN number or serial numbers, right? And what that does is that identifies and it keeps track of every Honda that came on a ship to the United States, okay? Now, that ship... That came over on water, okay? That ship, that boat came on water. All ships are named after women. I don't care when you think about it, they always refer to ships as women, female, okay? Let me say it that way, not women. And that's why you got the Santa Maria. You got the, all these different female named ships because all ships represent a vessel and that vessel is a woman, okay? That's why you got the mothership. Now, you say, well, pastor, what that got to do with me? I didn't get here on a ship. Yes, you did. You came on a ship, your mother. Your mother and my mother, my mother's live, is a ship. Yes, right, brother Jared, live birth. Now, let me show you what happened. That's right, I refer to my car as you too. You funny, funny you say that. But watch this, watch this. All ships, because we talked about earlier, go back and watch the video from earlier. Everything is about water. Watch this. Everything is about water. Money is water. The law is the law of seas or the law of water called maritime admiralty. So when Japan sends over and China and all those places sends over those Hondas and Toyotas or whatever, they come on a boat and they present something called a certificate. Of manifest and what the certificate of manifest says is it gives the people uh, where that boat that boat is coming into port it gives them a list of every Honda so that it can be accounted for well when you were born you came on a ship your mother was a ship 
Oh, I ain't talking about nobody. I ain't cracking tonight. I'm just saying, my mother was a ship. You say, Pastor, I didn't come on a ship. I was born in MCV. No, you wasn't. You came on a ship called your mother, and you traveled through water, and that water was called the birth canal. Okay, y'all ain't hearing me. That water was called the birth canal. After your mother's water broke. You see that? Your mother's water broke. You came down the birth canal and the mother ship, which is your mother, brought you to the dock. Good gracious of life. You see, all boats land at the dock, but your mama land at the dock tour. Your mother land at the dock tour. Oh, my goodness. And that's why you have the term harbor, which is really her birth. Okay. And by the way, when she land at the dock tour. Are y'all with me tonight? Are y'all there? I saw all the comments stop. That's cool. I just want to make sure I ain't talking to myself. Because I'm already on here longer than I plan to be. All right. Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Are you there? All right. Now. So the ships come and present a certificate. Well, your mother is presented a certificate. Your mother was presented a birth certificate. And you received a VIN number or a serial number called your social security number, which separates you from every other product. Okay? Now, which is human resource. You come through the birth canal. You land at the dock. Are you listening? Your mother water broke. When the ship comes in from Japan, it lands at the dock and your mother land at the dock door because everything, and I repeat, everything is done on water. Everything is done on water. Now, that's why everything has ship on the end. You have a citizenship. You have a friendship. You've got a, a, Lord, a dealership. You have a uh, friendship, relationship. Everything is done on the ship. Now, for those that are just coming in, I'm just answering questions tonight. Okay? So, they asked me about Social Security. When, and I'll repeat this again on next Wednesday, but I have to answer this this way. When you are born, you are sold on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, you were told that you have something called social security. What it, really what it's called, and you can research it, it's called the body social partnership. That's right, Sister Fitzgerald. You have what's called the body social, okay? And the body social simply means that they have to back what they do with your body. Because your body is a security for the corporation called the United States. So when you work for 50 years, you are a security stock that was sold on the New York Stock Exchange. And when they get finished using you after 50 years, they give you a little bit back of what you earned for them called social security. It comes from a term called the body social. OK, because ladies and gentlemen, as we talked about earlier, the laws of water mean you are not free. You have you are simply given liberty and liberty simply means you have permission. OK, so I, I, I'm going to stop there because I could just ramble on and on and on with stuff. But Sister Chandra Green asked that question. Thank you, Sister Chandra. Let's go to the next question about the Bible or about anything. Shoot. Next question. The next question. I'm just taking random questions. What time is it? It's 1126. I'm going to be out of here before by 12. I'm just taking questions tonight. I'm not doing the full Warfare Wednesday. It can be about the Bible. Pastor, I would like to know what lies were told from the scriptures when you can. Oh, my gosh. Man, you need to come out to the Word Church to hear that. Okay? Because 98 to 99% of what's taught in the church. For those that just came in here, that's right, Pastor Moore, the Statue of Liberty is in a body of water. 
because you're under the maritime admiralty, the law of water. That's why everything is water. When you go to the bank, why do you go to a bank? A bank is a river. It's on the both sides of a river. It's a river bank. The bank pushes the flow of currency. Currency is money. Money, no, is currency or water or liquid. And it all ties back to what I told y'all earlier. Okay, Pat, uh, Sister Karen, please remind me in two seconds. Okay? Please remind me in two seconds. I need you to keep reminding me. I will not get impatient because the comments are rolling and I get to talking. Okay? Y'all going to have to stop me because I'm only going to be on here for about 30 minutes. Okay? Now, that's why if you go back and watch my last video, and please don't forget to share it. We're doing a great job. Let's keep going. Okay? Let's keep going. Um, for those... Yes, and I brought a natural doctor in. You can get the video and look at it clearly. All viruses can be healed, and they simply live on mucus, okay? They live on mucus. You need to go back and find out about the colon. That's another topic. Now, that is also called cemetery law, so you go to banks. And when you go, to, when you go inside of a bank, they'll take you to the vault. Well, what is a vault? A vault is for dead people, Okay? And remember, it's all water. As I talked about earlier, you come through your birth canal, which is attached to your mom's navel. Listen to that. Navy, navel. Uh, you want to catch stuff while it's on sale or your account might dry up. Well, are y'all on board? I'm just asking. I'm going to have to run a tight ship. Okay. Well, maybe you're going to go to jail for laundering money, laundering money. Oh, my goodness. Do you hear the words? All money is, is water. Money does not go through your hands like water. Money is water. That's why when you go to spend money, you spend it with a merchant. Like, watch this. Iniquity. Black Moses says, what is iniquity? Iniquity is sin that is done repeatedly. Okay? It is done a sin, but not just a sin that is done once. It is a sin that is repeated. Uh, there's something in the Bible that talks about iniquities of the fathers. I'm taking y'all questions. Sister Karen uh, Pitchfoot wants to know about the Trinity. Now, I do a whole teaching on the Trinity. Go to my site called PastorRob.us and download it. That's right. You overdraft. That's good, Pastor. I never thought about that. You overdraft your bank account. That's right. Okay. And by the way, your mother is a ship. And your mother produces you, but your daddy manufactured you. He manufactured? He manufactured. Okay? And guess what, what? Listen, I'm not trying to be nasty tonight. Too late to be nasty. But guess what your dad was in your mother? He was a seaman. He was a seaman inside of your mothership. That's all he was. He was a seaman. On inside of the mothership. All right, let me keep going. There is no such thing as a trinity. I grew up believing in the trinity. Um, I'm not knocking people that do because it is a thing that is very confusing. I will talk about that in a further in another warfare Wednesday. You're always willing to come on a Sunday. Um, I challenge anybody to sit, to understand that Jesus, and this is going to sound very. This is going to sound kind of confusing. I'm telling y'all this before I say it. I'm telling you this before I say it. For those that are just coming in, I'm only answering questions tonight. At 12 o'clock, I'm gone. Okay? The Lord willing. What I would like you to understand is that the Trinity, this was asked by Sister Karen, I believe, is based around uh, the idea that everything is in threes. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I assure you that the definition of a trinity, anybody that has been to seminary, anybody that has studied theology, I can tell you right now that it is a fact. The definition of the trinity is, the, is uh, three distinct gods in the Godhead. Now, three distinct which mean they're all three separate 
and identifiable. Okay? Why did they leave out the woman? Who? Why did who leave out the woman? Sister Karen, why did who leave out the woman? I, I, I want to understand. While you're typing that, Brother Nate says, are the Old Testament laws done away with? Now, that's another topic I will teach at a further warfare wizard. Pastor Chris Moore, who has studied, says that's true. But I'm here to tell that, that there is three, that's the definition, three distinct. Thank you, Pastor. Now, the problem is the Bible don't teach three distinct. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If I need to go further into the Trinity, I can take it apart. But I want to keep moving because I got to be out of here by 12 o'clock. Okay. Are the Old Testament laws done away with? They are fulfilled. They are fulfilled. Sister Steph Kizzy says she just watched from earlier. Okay. Well, we don't live under the law, Sister uh, Lakeisha Pope. You're right. We don't live under the law. But what does that mean? See, the church is famous for saying things just like that, but they don't know what it means. Now, the laws are not uh, per se invisible. They, they don't cease to exist. But Jesus came to fulfill. What does the word fulfill mean? To fulfill mean that you had something that was not filled. It was not complete. It was not perfect. And I'm not here to get going with that tonight because that could take me on a two-hour road. Go to my site and look up on the law. Pastor Rob uh, dot us. Okay? Pastor Rob dot us. I believe it is. Or Pastor Rob Scarborough dot com. Tony Scarborough, welcome. How you doing? Hey there. So we live under grace because the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The scriptures, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, where is the woman? Okay, now you're going to make me teach. Sister Karen going to make me teach. Sister Karen going to make me teach. I ain't want to work tonight. Even though we're not official and I'm not going to load this post tonight, tell Fiji still they need to cut this check. Now, let me explain something about woman. One of the lies that we all have been told Okay, somebody want me to talk about lies of the Bible? Here is one. Here is one of the lies, Brother Curtis, and all y'all that ask me, or somebody that asked me about lies of the Bible, here it is. Sister Karen and got it started. Here it is. God did not make man, and then later he made woman. I'm going to explain where the woman come from. God did not make man, and then later came back later and make woman. Let me get my Bible. Can y'all turn to Genesis real quick? I want to show you something that you missed. Stop believing in little vacation Bible school stories. I promise you they're lying to you. If you want to know how God made the woman, let's understand this. Man came, watch this, the woman came out of man, but the man still came out of woman. And that sounds confusing. I'm going to explain. Okay. Genesis. Hold on. I got my Bible. Genesis. Chapter 5. Verse 1. Can y'all read with me? I'm going to read it. Sister Karen got her Bible. This is the book. I'm in Genesis 5. 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man. Now, when it says God created man, Sister Karen, it ain't talking about male. It's talking about mankind. Okay, that's number one. So that's one misunderstanding is that when it says in the day God created man, it's talking about mankind. In the likeness of God made he him. Look at verse two, Sister Karen. Male and female cre created he them. God didn't create Adam only, he created both of them at the same time. Now, I got to explain this, okay? All right. Listen good. I need y'all to get this. Sister Karen, do you see that? Verse 2 says, male and female created he them, not him, them. Now, somebody said, well, hold on, pastor. I thought the Bible says 
that God took the woman out of the man. Let me explain. Now, when God created the earth, the earth is simply a symbol for man and woman. When I say man, I'm talking about mankind right here. So let me explain. Does anybody in here know how to sew? Do I have anybody that know how to sew? Can anybody in here sew? Quickly, quickly. Because I'm going to show y'all something. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. Look at verse 2 again. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Have you ever wondered why women take the name of their, the last name of their husband when they get married? It came from this verse. That's why women, when you marry your husband, you take his last name because verse two says he created them at the same time, but he called their name Adam. Is there anybody that know how to sew quickly? My comments are not catching up. Is something wrong? Am I, are we frozen? Are y'all there? Okay. Well, Sister Karen says you sew. Watch this. If you're going to sew, uh, if you're going to put together, uh, let's say you're going to, uh, make a jacket. Let's say you're going to make a jacket. Okay. If you make a jacket, name for me some of the materials you're going to need. Name for me some of the materials you're going to need. Just name for me like three different things you need to put together a jacket. Quickly. Quickly. I'm getting ready to show y'all how God made Adam and Eve at the same time. Thread is one. Thank you, Sister Hines. Minister Hines, God bless you. Zipper number two. Yeah, April, Sister April, you got it. Sister, Sister Lakeisha Pope says needle, thread, and fabric. All right, now watch this. To all of y'all people, you got needle, thread, zippers, fabric. Y'all done gave me more than enough. Can I tell you? Once you put all of your materials on the table, your jacket is on the table. Yeah. I know that the buttons is over here. The zippers are laying over there and the material is over here. But what you have is a jacket. But you just don't have the jacket in a shape or its form. So what God says, he created man. And man didn't have what? Watch this. He created man, but the woman was in him, but she didn't have her own shape. She didn't have her own form because the master architect, which is God himself, had to put her together. She was alive and well, but she was in man. And what the church have told you is, she told, watch this. They told you that God made the man and then he took a rib from the woman. Now, I'm about to say something that's so crazy and then I'm going to bed. Okay, y'all, I, I might repeat this next week. Okay, y'all ask the crazy questions about the Bible and I'm going to answer it. I need four people to say bring it right now because my thing keeps freezing here and I want to show y'all something. I'm about to break down something that's going to blow your mind. I promise you. And y'all can thank Sister Karen for bringing this up. All right. Good night, Black Moses. All right. Come on, because I'm coming to bed. No homo right behind you. All right. Let's go. Let's go. The woman was in the man. And when the Bible says he took a rib, leave it to a lot of ignorant I was one. Anytime I talk about people being ignorant, I'm the first one. So nobody take it personal because I'm the biggest dummy out of them all. Y'all got it? Now, let me keep moving. How many times have we been told that God took a rib to make the woman? I grew up thinking that God took a rib out of the rib cage. And you even got preachers that say that man is missing one of his ribs to this day. Ladies and gentlemen. When the Bible says ribs, it's not talking about the rib cage. The word rib means, and you can research this word in the Hebrew. 
The rib means, watch this, the rib is a private part or private chamber. That's what the word rib means in Genesis. Go look it up. Go to your Strong's Concordians. So what did God take from the woman? Watch this. Yeah, it don't make no sense. We just say anything. What did God take from the woman, from the man? If he didn't take a rib, and it says rib, but it wasn't a rib cage. He took rib. Watch this. Ribosome. Nuclear acid. That's the way I like to say it. RNA. Now, do you know what RNA is? RNA is like short-term memory to DNA. So you have DNA and you have short-term version of it, which is RNA, ribosome nuclear acid. Okay? Now, I'm about to get into it now. So hang in there with me and I'm going to bed. What God took from man is a secret part of him, a part of him that was already in him, the woman, okay? And he created and gave that woman her own shape or body. Now, the, help me out, y'all, because I, 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 I was flying airplanes in high school. I'm going to bed, Sister Pope. I know y'all party all night, but I don't. I'm a homebody. Now, watch this. Watch this. I love y'all, by the way. Help me out. The XX chromosome belong to the woman. Then you have what's called the XY. I'm getting ready to show y'all something. The XX is the woman. The XY is the man. I thought Black Moses was going to bed. He doing one of my numbers. Now, watch this, y'all. The reason the man has an XY is there an echo in here. Black Moses, what you talking about, man? Okay, I don't know. Y'all ain't gonna, gonna stress me out. Check what out? Black Moses, what do you want me to check out? Anyway, listen good. Where was I? Oh, a woman has XX, a man has XY. What is the difference in an XX and an XY? One of the legs, you're right, Sister Pope, you're right. One of the legs on the Y has been, is missing. Okay? You have XX for the woman and XY. One of the legs on the man is missing. Now, let me show y'all something about how powerful a woman is. We have elevated man. Okay, Black Moses. Okay. Now, there you go. Come on, Black Moses. Come on back in the house. The X and the Y is the key. The leg is the rib. Now watch this. What did God take from man? He took one of the legs. Good God Almighty. That's why man has an XY. Now, he didn't actually take it. He just simply made it. Uh, what do they call it? It's a term for it. Not recessive, but it's. Ah, what is this term? It's not recessive. God bless you, Black Moses. It's not recessive. Anyway, it's still there, but it's laying dormant. Okay, 
So when you see the X, Y, and a man, stay with me because it's getting ready to get good. Before every man develops into a man, he has the same body parts as a woman. Before a woman develops into a woman, she has the same body parts as a man. Okay, stay with me. A woman has a womb. A woman has a womb. A man does too. But the man's womb is called his prostate. Okay? So the man's womb is the prostate, but the man's womb cannot or should not become enlarged. Jared just had to see it. Watch this. The man's womb, the man's womb, watch this, should never become enlarged because then he won't be able to pee. That's what you get when you get a swollen prostate. Well, why is it that a woman's womb does expand so that she can carry life? Because of her XX chromosome, because of how she has developed, her body allows her to expand. Wherein the man would have what you might have developed into what's called prostate cancer. Now, the clitoris, y'all got me talking about everything tonight. The clitoris, a man has a clitoris. It's just not called a clitoris, a clitoris. Lord have mercy, a clitoris. It's called the elongated, uh, Lord have mercy. It's called the elongated clitoris or the phallus. Okay? A man and a woman both have testicles and ovaries. And if you don't believe me, just look at it. A woman has ovaries, but any doctor, any research will tell you that for so many weeks, before you can tell the sex of a child, the ovaries stay up within a man. And if they're going to be a boy, Test, uh, testosterone kicks in and when that kicks in it causes the ovaries to fall okay y'all know what I'm talking about now y'all it's late the kids in the bed the nuts drop that's what you get the term fall of man the fall of man is when the ovaries or the testicles drop or descend Okay? Now, if you ever look, are y'all there? If you ever looked at a baby, and I say a baby because everybody who's grown and got kids have changed a baby. Okay? And I'll repeat this again on Wednesday. Don't worry. There's a line on the man. There's a line that looked like somebody stitched that baby closed. You ever seen a naked baby? It looks like a line from the base of the penis. Okay? A line from the base of the penis all the way back to his rectum. A line from the base of the penis. You ever notice that? On the little baby boys? It looks like somebody stitched it together. A woman has the same thing. But hers is closed, or they call it, or whether hers is open, I think that's called like the vas deferens. Okay? The vas deferens, or the, 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 the lips. I forget the term. Y'all forgive me. Okay? And the man is stitched closed. I'm trying to show you how man and woman were exactly the same before God kicks in and makes a cha uh, and this and separates them by shape. Okay? Now, that's why men are masculine 
and women are feminine. Masculine, masculine, linear, masculine. What do you mean masculine? Man has that line, but women are feminine. Women are said to be circular and they are represented by the number nine, saying that they are complete. Okay, that's something to argue about right there. Now, when God took the woman from Adam, he took something and left both of them in need of something that the other one has. And that's why we can't stay off each other today. I'm done with that question. Did I answer your question, Sister Karen? I'll bring it back on Wednesday and talk about it again. I'm taking your Bible questions. What time it is? What time it is? What time is it? It's 11.53. Y'all got seven minutes. So no, I keep telling y'all, all y'all got to do is bring up a subject. This is what we do. When you come to the Word Church on Sundays, you write down your question. I never know what I'm going to be asked. I answer the questions live. Okay? I don't know what y'all going to ask me tonight. I don't know, Sister Karen. Sister Karen don't go to the Word Church. Sister Shakita wants to know about tithing. Now, Sister Shakita, I promise you, I will talk, I will spend a whole Warfare Wednesday on tithing. I'm not going to do it tonight because there's no way I can walk everybody through it in seven minutes. What I will tell you is this. Nowhere in the New Testament should, any, you're welcome, Sister Karen, should anybody be paying or demanding paying tithes in 2017. I can prove it anytime y'all like. It's not scriptural. It's, uh, it's not biblically sound for those that do it in today's time. And it is actually a sin to enforce it in 2017. I promise you, Sister Keith, I ain't putting you off, but I know what I'm going to get into if I start that, if I open up that can. We got six minutes, y'all. I just I'm just answering questions. Anything you want, the Bible or whatever, I'm just answering your questions. The Sabbath day. Well, okay, now let me tell you about the Sabbath day. Because I'm not even going to get into that because that can get long. Okay, what's up, Dean Shay? Don't worry, we're just answering questions tonight and I'm going to bed. We ain't doing Warfare Wednesday Part 2 or none of that. I'm just answering everybody's questions and I just did. Okay, folks have been hitting me up like crazy. We just walked everybody through. That's all right. Uh, Raquel Barrera, sister, God bless you. For those that have been following our work, thank y'all so much. Please don't be sorry. I have answered so many questions. I just explained how God made man and woman at the same time. I also explained how the social security number or the social security card is actually a bank, is actually a bank document. And how you were sold on the New York Stock Exchange. I also talked about, answered a question about the Trinity. And now they want to know about the Sabbath in October 31st. Let me say this. The Sabbath was originally Saturday. That never changed when you look at the original day of the Sabbath. Sabbath comes from the word Shabbat. And... Many people still try to keep the Sabbath. Jesus came back later and said, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. So I'm not going to get into it, but we are not required to keep one day any longer. We're required to live holy every day. That's what he requires. I'll talk more about that when I get into the law. What are your other questions? I got five minutes. Five minutes. Any more questions? I'm going to pray for a few people tonight. So maybe it will take me longer than five. Every time I get tricked into this, this is bad. This is good and bad. By the way, if y'all have not done it, go back and get my video from earlier and share it and, and share it again and put it out there. I want to flood the timeline all day tomorrow with that video. I put out information like you've never heard today. And I'm and I have I've only begun. I'm just beginning. Uh I found out that King James was gay. 
Is that the reason women wear to be quiet in the church and not preach? Saying that he has something against women. No. Yes, King James was noted to be a homosexual. And I'm not moved by that. Let me tell y'all a secret. The King James and every other version that, like, well, let me say it this way. The King James was simply a king, okay? He did not write the Bible. He just took a Bible version that was written and put his name on it. The kings did not actually write the Bible, okay? They simply stamped their name on it. Now, let me tell you another secret. There's like a hundred different versions of the Bible you can get in a store, right? And the truth is, they have changed the Bible and messed with it so much because to avoid plagiarism laws, the Bible must be changed. Every version must be changed about 20%. Okay? About 20%. So the best thing to do to get closer to the truth is to get the older versions. Okay? I have an older version. I think I have a... A Bible that's a couple hundred years old by version, it doesn't even have the letter J in it. Okay? The older you get, the closer you get to the original text. Everything that's new, they have to keep altering it and changing it to avoid plagiarism laws. Next question. Does everyone have the ability to speak in tongues? One day I'll do a whole teaching on speaking in tongues. Okay? First of all, this stuff that they got y'all doing in church, Elabo, Holabo, Shanda, I should have bought a Honda, but I bought a Toyota, and all of that, that's not speaking in tongues as the Bible is talking about. Somebody gonna get upset with me, but if you want to know the truth, you ask me. The word tongue in the Bible is diagonal, and what that means is dialogue, language, okay? When they spoke in tongues in the Bible, it first started at Pentecost, and the Bible names for you all the languages and all the different kinds of people who spoke. It is not an unintelligent or uh, uh, it is not some unintelligent gibberish. It is not some unidentifiable scrambled up syllables. Speaking in tongues in the Bible are real languages and the purpose it was given. Now, now watch this. It don't matter where I go. You can't find, and I, I was a tongue talking. That's where I come from. I want you to get this. You can't find one place in the Bible where the church told you that it's a secret prayer language that the devil don't understand. I get so tired of hearing people say that because we used to say it. Oh, that's your heavenly prayer language. Show me that and I'll never preach again. Show me that and I'll never preach again. Next question. I'll do more talking about tongues at a later Warfare Wednesday. Y'all make the request. I'll get to that after I get through all this occult and witchcraft foolishness that needs to be exposed. Any more questions before I go? Any more questions before I go? Yes. And tell Fiji cut the check. Any more questions? I'm going to pray for somebody. I hope this is making some sense tonight. I just came on to answer a few questions. People were talking to me in my post. And I just figured, hey, let's just answer some questions. What do I think about the girl in Chicago? Unfortunately, I'm not 100% certain. But I am leading myself to believe now that you're looking at something that was totally contrived. It doesn't make any sense. And I ain't stupid. And I ain't fitting to play stupid for nobody. All right? I ain't playing stupid for nobody. That girl didn't walk into no freezer in the condition they said that she walked into any freezer. Open that heavy door for free. First of all, to even run that freezer. Okay? That's a whole nother object, another thing that's going on. A lot of these events are, if they do, if they are actually happening, I believe they're happening by way of, of police. I really do. There's some stuff going on. I don't trust it. And I'm going to talk more about it. I'm going to talk more about it as I continue to look into it. Okay. But I don't trust it. 
Why shouldn't you watch the TV shows or movies that contain witches or demons? Well, that goes without saying. First of all, the Bible says, I suffer a witch not to live. For those that are just coming in, we about to go, we about to leave. But y'all come on in anyway. I'm just answering questions tonight. I'm not going back into the live. I'll see y'all next Wednesday. And I'll see y'all Sunday at the Word Church. Ain't no sense of y'all keep on messing around and not coming to get the truth. You can write the same questions down and meet me on Sunday and give them to the ushers. And we do live questions there. But anyhow, witches and demons and all these different things um, open up spirits. The television is a portal. What you see in your eyes, what you take in your ears is a portal. Sunday, I'll be at 4108, Brother Curtis. West Clay Street at 12 noon, the Word Church. Okay? When I say Fiji need to cut the check, that's just me picking because I'm always drinking these Fiji water. And y'all can see this logo. Okay, I'm going to pray tonight. I'm going to pray. Um, and I just feel like I don't want to give them this credit. Pretty soon, I believe we're going to blow up. People are going to see this stuff everywhere. The more y'all share it. And I think they ought to pay me since they know, since y'all now know that I drink a lot of Fiji. For now. And I say for now. Anyway, Sister Chiquita Foster says that holy oil they put on people. Pastor, as saying in 24 hours, God going to bless you with a house. <laughs> All right. Let me just say this. When I teach on the occult and witchcraft in church, I'm going to go over the trinkets that are really based on witchcraft. The whole idea of holy oil, holy oil is an Old Testament law principle, but it also is very attached to paganism. The Catholic Church is most famous for putting oil on people. Can I just give you a short answer so I can go to bed? There is nothing holy about holy oil. When I first started pastoring, they gave me a briefcase with a little thing of oil so I could rub people down. The Catholic Church believes in oil for several reasons. Brother Rashad, all right, I don't know if I'm going to get to it tonight, though. But yes, I need to talk about the cloud so people can understand that nobody's in heaven. That's what Rashad Jenkins is talking about. I need to, we was in the barbershop talking about it. I need to go back and, and explain it again. Anyway, there's nothing anointed about oil. Oil is a symbol in the Bible for the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. Can I just tell y'all something real quick? Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is the function of Jesus. You can rub people down with oil all you want. It don't have any power. The anointing oil is in you if you have the Holy Ghost in you. I don't rub people down with oil any longer because the oil of the anointing is in me. Okay, that's just a quick answer. All these are holy trinkets and good luck charms. Church folk need to get rid of it. These preachers wearing these cross tucked in their pocket and all this other foolishness is devilment. It's witchcraft. It's evil, evil, evil. And let me tell you, most of these prophets is telling you God going to do it in 24 hours. Most of them are liars, pro uh, prognosticators, all uh, 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 working under familiar spirits, so on and so forth. Yes. Yes, the Catholic Church is nothing but sex worship, just like your government, because I told you earlier, Washington, D.C. used to be called Rome. I hope y'all did y'all research. Washington, D.C. used to be called Rome. And that's why the priests do what they do with the little boys and they go to a seminary. Do you know what a seminary is? A seminary is where they used to drop semen. That's what it's called, seminary. Go back and research the seminary. That's why uh, uh, Eddie Long, and I don't talk about dead people, but y'all know what I'm talking about. That's why he was anointing them little boys. It comes from a spirit that's rooted in the Catholic Church where they bring those little boys in. And the, and the Pope is one perverted, disgusting creature, a very powerful man. But uh, that's why they anoint the head. You get it? You anoint the head. 
I'm not trying to discuss you. Go back and look into the sex worship. That's what it is. You anoint the head. You lubricate the head. Yes, D.C. was called Rome. Because they still function off Rome. Remember, Europe controlled, watch this. Europe controlled the world for about 2,000 years. And Rome controlled Europe. That's why they say all roads lead to where? Rome. It don't take a long time. Y'all keep the question. No, don't, don't don't keep the questions rolling. Any more quick questions? I'm getting ready to run my mouth. Let me close my big mouth real quick. It's after 12 o'clock, y'all. Any last questions? We'll be back Wednesday. I'll be in the Tidewater area tomorrow. Uh, we'll be meeting at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn, decoding the Bible symbols. Okay? 7.30, doors open. I'll be at 1570 North Military Highway. I'll also be on the radio in that area tomorrow at 12 noon on 14.50 a.m. and 105.7 f.m. Uh, on your radio dial. Anybody else have any questions? Any more questions? We just did questions and answers tonight. I asked somebody earlier about hemorrhoids. And nobody answered me. Is there somebody tonight that's suffering from hemorrhoids? I don't know why it came back to me again. If you got the hemorrhoids or you suffer from hemorrhoids, just type me so I can tell you what I need to tell you and pray for you. Are y'all there? Hemorrhoids. Okay, nobody said anything about the hemorrhoids. Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Sister Whitney, I promise you this. God bless you, Sister Whitney. Um, your headaches are coming as witchcraft attacks. I want you to go, I want you to do this for me on a physical end. I want you to drink nothing but water. Can you do that? Can you do that? Is that tough? Can you drink water? Can you drink water? Talk to me, Sister Whitney. I want to talk to you for a minute. Okay. Now I got people that's telling me about, I believe, the hemorrhoids. Okay, hemorrhoids root from fear of deadlines. Okay, fear of deadlines. Strain of fear or stress of having to come to deadlines. If you had it a few weeks ago, I guarantee you there were some serious things that you had to do around that time. I don't know where barbershop Cleo at now. I don't know. I don't know. Okay? But I know Rashad and, and all of them are still over at our keys. Okay? That's what I'll be. Whitney, it's on my heart to tell you to drink water. Drink water. Leave the sugar alone. I see your head hurting. I can see you hit. You know how girls hit their head when they itch some itch. I can see you frustrated. The mucus. Can I share this with you, Sister Karen? I want you to cut any dairy. I want you to cut any dairy products, any cheese, ice cream. You know what dairy is. Cut it. If you're not, I want you to cut it. I'll do a teaching on smoking real soon and all other addictions. It's all right, Sister Karen. It's like every other addiction. It's just like church people who can't stay out of the cookie jar. For people that like sugar like me, I like bread. I don't like sugar. I like bread, which is nothing but sugar. That's called a spirit of dry drunk. A dry drunk is a person 
that don't know they got the same problem as an alcoholic, but they don't drink. Sister Karen, are you there? I want you to cut dairy. For instance, I did something I don't normally do. I ate yogurt. And I can feel this. <sighs> Y'all pardon me. <sighs> when you have a coating of white on your tongue and you get that early morning hawk, that's dairy products. Nine times out of ten coming out of you. Sister Brandis Jones, I need prayer for new employment. Okay. We're going to see what the Lord say about it. Because if that's what he says, you're going to get it if the Lord says so. I want you to... Uh, I want you to put in applications. If you, I'm sure you're already doing that. But I want to make sure that you do it. From, the, from tonight, I want you to go back and act like this is your first time putting them out. Resumes, applications, I want you to go crazy with them. What was your prayer, sister? Let me go back. Sister, sister Pope, sister Pope. Pray for me, my business and my partners. 